it also gave all of us the sense that we belong to a large genealogy of a struggle and resistance and survival. We used to say we're here and you know we're queers. It's like we, we are here, we are non-binary, we will still be here and we are alive, you know. Hi, my name is Peter Kennett and I'm here with Paul B. Preciado, the filmmaker of Orlando, My Political Biography. So you've built this like incredible career as a philosopher, a curator, critic, author, and now filmmaker with this you know, deeply stimulating and moving film, Orlando, My Political Biography, which I saw a couple nights ago. This new artistic path, was that something you always wanted to pursue or is, is this completely sort of about this project? No, it's not, uh, it's not something that I thought about, like being, I never wanted to be a filmmaker and I still don't want to be a filmmaker. I've been collaborating with other artists, like writing scripts for them, for instance, and I also wanted to work with bodies instead of just with uh, words, right? I wanted to work with people and to have like uh, their emotions and their bodies in, in actions. So at that point, I guess that I wanted to tell stories differently. Because, of course, very few people maybe read um, philosophy books, right? Uh, and was basically when I presented the film at La Berlinale in Berlin, it was amazing. Like, basically, like, seeing, like, a huge audience of very mixed people and, you know, some, sometimes, like, queer, non-queer people, straight, uh, you know, cis people, trans people, everyone, like, basically coming into their arms and, like, uh, crying together and things like that. I thought, well, this is a different way of making politics, which I like. Someone once asked me, why don't you write your biography? I replied, because fucking Virginia Woolf wrote my biography in 1928. I mean, this movie is very much tied to this book. Oh, um, absolutely. <laughs> I'm curious, so when was the first time you encountered that book, if you remember, and I'm assuming you didn't think, you know, one day I'm going to adapt this into a <laughs> cinematic reflection on trans identity. I actually read it like most people when I was a teenager at a school. For people that maybe don't know, I was born in Spain in the 70s, so it was still a time with basically of a uh, Franco, we were still un under a kind of fascist regime. So reading this book at school, I mean, for me, it was like, a, you know, groundbreaking. But uh, of course I was not uh, in a class where anyone said to me like this is a trans book or something like that. Absolutely not. It was supposed to be a book of adventures. This novel is almost a hundred years old and um, obviously the film gets into how complicated a figure Orlando is, but obviously it has a lot of affection for Orlando uh, as a text and as a character. What was it about this text that you feel still has something to offer today? You know, I felt myself like a kind of non-binary kid. I couldn't even name it. I couldn't even say the, what I felt. And then I encountered a book. And the book gave me the possibility of uh, imagining my life differently, much more than anything else. Because if I look around, nothing would allow me to think myself as a non-binary person or as a trans person. It was basically in the book it was possible. So as soon as I read Orlando, I said to myself, well, if this is possible, then I might have the chance of living the life that I want to live, right? And it became really like an amazing political journey for all of us. Like basically also seeing the eight-year-old kids uh, sometimes speaking with the 70 year or so. And, and, you know, like it also gave all of us the sense that we belong to a large genealogy of a struggle and resistance and survival. And yeah, we, as we used to say, we're here and, you know, we're queers. It's like we, we are here, we are non-binary, we will still be here and we are alive, you know. And this was done with a lot of uh, political joy. Yeah, I mean, and you, you know, def defined it in the title at least as a political biography, yes. your political biography. Yeah. Um, but it also felt to me like a manifesto. And I, I was just curious, like, what kind of hope you want this film to offer people who, who <coughs> see it? Because I feel like there is a lot of hope there. Yeah, for me, that was super important to, to make a film that is really about political joy and about hope. It's almost like an enacted utopia. Instead of being the film that we, just, that we usually see about trans people is basically, is either the victim position, I mean, let alone all these years that in the 90s and early 2000s in which basically the trans person had to die at the end of the film. That was like, you know, this kind of very necropolitical way of speaking about trans people, which is, you know, it's like you have no place within society. I wanted to do it in a very different way. For me, it's not about explaining anything. It's not about reclaiming our position in society. It's just a way of saying we are already here living non-binary lives in a very normative binary world. 
and maybe you have to mutate with us. I mean, this is what I'm trying to say in the film, is I'm inviting everyone, trans and non-trans and binary and non-binary people, to maybe just like come with us into this Orlando adventure of mutating. Because as a society, we're gonna have to mutate if we wanna survive to what is happening, right? Like we're gonna have to leave behind capitalism, the taxonomies of our colonial history, racism, patriarchal society. So we are going into a big mutation and that's, that's the Orlando adventure. Well, I'm so excited for people to take this adventure as this film sort of gets out and about thank all over so the much. world. Yeah, so thank, thank you so much for making it. Thank you so much for having me, and it's really a pleasure. I hope that everyone that is like a queer, non-queer, fellows, whatever, come to see the film and, yeah, go for political joy. Yes. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks. so much. Thank you.